Hey, everybody. Michael Crump here yet again, covering all of the latest and the greatest PlayStation 4 homebrew news and much, much more. Today, I want to talk about how you can spend about $10 and you can create your own host that will allow you to exploit your PS4 9.00 firmware. Let's jump into it. Okay, so one of the boards that I decided to buy was this one right here. This is simply the D1 Mini Wi-Fi IoT Development Board. What this board allows you to do is, is that you can create an access point that basically your PlayStation 4 is just going to connect to, and then it's going to serve up the files that typically that you would go to a host to run. So why exactly would you want this? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. The main one being is, is that no internet access is actually required if you build your own. So if you happen to take your PlayStation 4, maybe out into a remote area, like a camping spot or something like that, you could connect to this D1 Mini's Wi-Fi access point and still run your exploit. It would be completely independent of any sort of internet access. The second thing that comes to mind is speed. So this is all being served right off of a local network, which means that you don't have to worry about a host being taken down. Maybe the author decides to shut down the server or maybe there are some additional uh, problems that they may have ran into where they take down the host. And the third reason is extensibility. So while we're going to look at just today using this chip to create an access point for our exploits, you can also do some really other cool things such as auto injecting the USB flash drive in order to perform the hack automatically. I've got another video that I'll be doing shortly that's gonna be covering that. And so this is the board that I bought and I bought the D1 Mini version 3.1.0. Some of the earlier versions of the D1 Mini still will work. This is just more one of the more compact versions of this board. So if we quickly scroll over the board, you can see it has all kinds of different pins and layouts where we can connect and extend some of the functionality that it has. And then right here is the back of it. And this simply works with a micro USB cable. And as I mentioned, I did overpay for this device for $10. You can get these quite cheaper if you do something such as eBay for the most part, these run about $3 a piece. So if you're willing to wait for shipping to get it to you, then you can get a couple of these different boards in case you have multiple PS4s lying around the house. Because in general, the Wi-Fi signal that comes off of the D1 Mini, especially by itself, is not going to be able to broadcast to other rooms inside of your home. And then you're going to need something like this right here. You should have a ton of these already sitting in a drawer somewhere, but these are just USB 2.0 A male to micro B cables. So this is the same exact cable that you typically use to charge your PlayStation 4, but obviously there's different types of cables there. So there's some USB cables that are primarily just for powering, and then there's others that also are intended to transfer data. You're just going to need one that will at least allow you to transfer data. Next, you're going to need to head over to this GitHub site here, and this is just called PS4 Server 9.00. Now, it says in here that this project was designed for the D1 Mini or the ESP8266, which you probably have heard, especially if you've been around in the PS4 homebrew scene for a little bit. But this also works with the D1 Mini Pro. And the main thing to call out here is that there just is a difference between the amount of storage space on the Mini versus the Mini Pro. And down into this, you'll see that they've already implemented a couple of different pages. The one that we're going to be paying the most attention to, at least at the beginning, is just going to be this admin.html. That's going to allow us to upload the exploit as well as other payloads. 
And down at the bottom here, this tells you a little bit about the difference in the space that's already on the Mini. So as you can see, the flash size is four megabytes for the Mini, which is the one that we've got. And then there's another one, which is the D1 Mini Pro, which has 16 megabytes. Now, if you want to put all of the different payloads onto this little device, you're probably gonna to want to get the Mini Pro. For myself, I'm running the exploit and about three payloads, and that's really all that I need. But again, if you really want to have all of the different payloads all stored on the same device, then you may wanna get the Mini Pro. Okay, and if you scroll on back up to the top here, go to where it says code and then download zip file. And then you're gonna need the software that comes with the Arduino, which is the Arduino IDE. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a Windows, there's Mac, and then there's obviously Linux. And the last build date here was on the 20th of December, 2021. Click on Windows and then just download, and you'll notice it should start downloading for you. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to Windows Explorer. Okay, in Windows Explorer, I've went ahead and I've extracted both of these files. And we're gonna begin by heading on up to where it says the Arduino Nightly Windows. And then we're gonna go into Arduino Nightly. And then we're going to just double click on the Arduino.exe. Now, before we begin programming the board, I wanna show you what my setup looks like. Okay, so here is my D1 mini board and it's simply plugged into my micro USB cable. And then that is currently being plugged into my computer. So this obviously gives me the power to run the access point. And I also don't need to actually power this with the PlayStation 4. I can run this anywhere as long as the access point and the PlayStation 4 is close enough together. So as you can see, there's no real magic that is happening here. It's just simply plugged in and waiting to be programmed. Okay, to begin, let's go into File and let's go to Preferences. And then down at the bottom, or close to the bottom, you should see where it says Additional Boards Manager URL. Go ahead and paste in this URL, and I will include that in the description where you can just simply copy and paste it. And then let's press OK. Once we do that, let's head up to Tools, and we're going to go to Board, and we're going to head over to Boards Manager. For the name here, we're just going to simply type in WE, and you should see the ESP8266 board. So click on it, and then press the Install button and give it a few moments and it should complete. Once that's complete, hit the close button here and let's go to tools, board, and let's switch to ESP8266 boards. And then we're going to select the one that says D1 space R2 and mini. And in order to help you understand what exactly we're doing here, I just wanted to show you the code that we're about to upload. So head back over to where you extracted the GitHub files, and we're going to go into PS4 server. And then there is a folder here that's PS4 server 900. And then there is this .ino file. So the .ino file is the instructions that's going to be used to upload to this little chip, which is going to allow us to make our own access point. Back in Arduino, let's hit File and let's hit Open. And now let's just select that .ino file. There it is. I'm just going to click on it and now go Open. It typically creates a new window and that's okay. Just go ahead and maximize the screen there. Click on Tools and then go down and double check that it does have the proper board. The speed should be fine. All these settings should be fine, except for where it says flash size. So by default, it's on two megabytes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to three megabytes and then OTA at 512 kilobytes. And now I typically find it to be a good practice to go ahead and to compile the sketch. 
So what I do is I go up to where it shows this little check mark box, and this is the verification process. So it's good to run this. Let's just make sure that you have everything set up. It will do this when we go ahead and hit the upload, but just as a safe measure, I think it's good to do it before we upload. Okay, so it looks like it finished up there and there is no errors. So now let's go ahead and click on upload. Again, it's starting the compilation process. And now it is asking us which serial port is the device plugged in on. Now, this is pretty easy to find because you simply just go to your device manager and scroll down to where we see ports. And then you can see my USB serial is setting right here on COM number three. We'll select COM three and we're gonna hit okay. And while it is deploying, you can scroll through this and take a look at some of the code. A couple of the things that I think will be interesting is, is that you can change the AP SSID as well as uh, remove the password if you would like. And it is now finishing up writing that to our device. Okay, so that looks great. Let's go ahead and switch over to our PS4 and connect to that access point. Okay, back over on our PS4, we're gonna go to network. We're gonna go set up internet connection. We're going to select Wi-Fi and I'm going to just simply go down to where it says custom and PS4 underscore web underscore AP is the device. So we're gonna select that one and we're gonna go automatic, do not specify, and then manual for the DNS settings. Now, since I've already set this up before, my DNS settings have already been populated. For yours, just make sure your primary and your secondary DNS is just 10.1.1.1. Select next, automatic, and then do not use, and then we can just back out of it. Back in our browser, I'm gonna to go to bookmarks and I'm gonna to go to the admin panel. For you, you would just need to simply type 10.1.1.1 slash admin.html. And if you see this page, then you have successfully connected. Okay, so the first one is just the ESP information. And if we click on file manager, you won't see anything in it. That's because by default, it didn't actually upload any files. That's something that we have to do ourselves manually in just a second. Right now, it's just got the base application on it that allows it to run this HTTP server. There's also a file uploader, which we're about to go and take a look at over on our PC. And then there's a few other options to like update the firmware. There's a configuration editor, which you'll probably enjoy simply because you can also change the access point here. You can change the password if you would like to, and a few other settings, as well as formatting the storage. And then you can also reboot the ESP device completely from your PS4. Okay, let's switch over to our PC again. Okay, so on our PC, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've went ahead and connected to that same access point once you've done that, simply head over to 10.1.1.1 slash admin.html. And we're going to go straight to the file uploader. We're going to select the files and just navigate to wherever you extracted all of the files that was in the GitHub. And we're going to go into PS4 server and then PS4 server again. We're going to go into the data folder and we're just going to simply select all of these. Now, the ones that you'll see that is included is obviously Gold Hen, and then there is a app dumper. There is also the app to USB, as well as the history blocker. Now, these were just the payloads that the author decided to include. You can obviously switch and swap these out for whatever you're looking to do on your PS4. We're going to hit open now. Make sure you do hit the upload files button. And if you see this screen, then you know it has worked successfully. Okay, so back over on the PS4, I did click on the file manager again. And this just shows me that these files are on my D1 mini. And now I can start using them directly from my PS4. Okay, and now in order to run our exploits, all we need to do is we need to remove the admin 
HTML and then hit the R2 button. Okay, so that didn't take very long and now we're at our 9.00 payloads and I'm just gonna select the gold hen. Okay, we're gonna insert the USB drive. Okay, we got a pop-up. And okay, that should do it. All right, our system is now jailbroken. We'll just go ahead and verify it by heading up to settings and then back to gold in. And I'll just run a game just for the sake of running a game. And we're gonna pick gun score in Cannoli too. <laughs> this company should be like paying me now at this point. Okay, so thank you so very much for watching yet again in yet another video. I could not thank you all enough. Do me a favor though, hit the subscribe button. Also, share this video. Please share it. Share it on Twitter, share it on Reddit, share it in a couple of different places. I cannot wait to see this community continue to grow like I've seen it growing over the past month. I love your beautiful faces. Please keep coming back and hitting the like button and leaving comments below. I love your faces. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!